It's Scott again. Um, I am on my laptop right now. I'm running Abacus. This is a student edition, so I got one. Uh, I was at university. Um, and what I'm going to do is multi multiple, multiple steps, multiple videos, trying to get to something that looks like this. This is a L3 lumbar vertebrae of a human. Uh, there was a bunch of processing done to get from DICOM images to a 3D model and then a 3D volumetric mesh. And from here, we can do a bunch of different things, put stresses, strains, etc., on it. Um, but we need to do a few steps beforehand. So, um, just to give you a little anatomy, uh, this is the we're looking top down. This is the vertebral body, and this is where your spinal cord is. Um, and this is you have a lot of bony protrusions coming off of this that uh, help protect it. Um, you've got let's see if we can get a better view. You get your superior articular facets um, or facets. And these are articulating with the ver vertebra that's superior to this one. Likewise, you got them down here, which are the inferior articulating sets um, that interact with the vertebra below it. Um, between ver vertebrae are, is an intervertebral disc that's kind of spongy. It has the annulus fibrosi and nucleus pulsa. Likewise, we have the, the lamina and the pedicles. If you... Uh, ever been in surgery uh, you, with one of these things, uh, it's very common to see a pedicle screw inserted. And so if you're going to look top down, the pedicles are right here and the lamina are right here. So in a pedi pedicle screw, they're going to insert right here and go somewhat into the body of the vertebra. Likewise, uh, um, there's some surgical procedures where they'll do laminectomies, so they'll remove this part. Um, which will temporarily expose the spinal cord. Um, if I can rotate this around. This is kind of the posterior view. Uh, posterior spinal process. We also have the transverse left and right spinal processes. Um, so all these, um, this is not a high quality mesh. I'll produce a more high quality mesh when we get to um, the actual videos, but this is kind of give you an idea of what we can do in these uh, processing steps to get to this point. Um, so hopefully we'll come up with actually a better mesh for this. All right, so I'm back on my Mac, and uh, I'm going to be bouncing back and forth between a few computer computers, um, between work, home, and uh, my desktop. So um, I'm in the process of writing a few papers, so I apologize for just kind of the early um, stages of graphics and whatnot. I've never written graphics before for a paper. But anyways, here's kind of the overall workflow. I showed you kind of uh, the surface and volume mesh on an abacus. And um, anyway, for the next few videos, I'm going to try and get from the patient DICOM, which is over here, all the way to one of those meshes back in abacus. Once we get there, we can do all sorts of abacus things, um, uh, which we can talk about later, but for right now just kind of go from the top to bottom of the workflow. We start off with the patient DICOM, which is over here, and I kind of showed you the vertebrae. Um, and these are just kind of axial slices. Um, they're uh, describing, besides the X and Y, kind of the Z unit is the Hounsfield unit, which is kind of the level of intensity um, that is computed by the CT scanner. And so uh, the wider or brighter spots have a higher Hounsfield units are generally more dense. Um, there's different different physical constraints for that, but uh, so you'll see bone here, or is this kind of a gas bubble in the intestine? Anyways, we're gonna figure out uh, how to segment this. Um, there's tons of different programs and different ways of doing that. I could probably create a video just talking about the different segmentation tools that we have, um, and from there we're gonna create a mask. And let me show you an example of a mask. Here's an example of a 3D mask that took me a while, but not too long to take out, but it's kind of a slow process. So um, we took that, this is straight from the CT data that uh, after a little processing uh, kind of shows you, um, after cutting it out, all the other vertebrae, all the other soft tissue, this is what we're kind of end up with. So this is, uh, this is upside down, but, um, since it is CT data and the resolution isn't perfect, um, it's a little rough on some edges, but overall gives you the pretty good structure of the vertebra. 
Um, from here, um, this is an Osiris, by the way, which is freeware. Um, you can download um, pretty simply. From here, we have to export it. Um, we have to export this as a 3D model. So there's a bunch of different ways of doing this. Um, the most common way, and the one that's used in freeware a lot, is through STL files, which I believe stands for stereolithography. Um, actually, if you had an ST file of this, you could send it to a 3D printer, which I did um, this week, so I'm waiting for that to come back. But you can get uh, straight from this, send it to somewhere, and they can print it for you, or do all sorts of other processing, which I'll show you in subsequent videos. And in Osiris, it's a little tough, and it's a little messy, but that's the reason why we have post-processing. But here's the STL file that I was able to get out of that 3D mask, and you'll see that there's a bunch of islands um, you know, right here, individual pixels. It's not exactly smooth, especially the, for some reason this top surface I can never quite get to be completely smooth, but um, I figured out different algorithms, <coughs> excuse me, different algorithms and different processes that we can do to smooth this up, make it more realistic and physiologically and anatomically correct. Um, so coming back here, so this is a 3D model and then um, once we have that, we can create, there's several programs that create meshes out of this, and that's what I've imported into Abacus. From there, you know, we can have multiple vertebrae with different meshes, and we can give them density, elastic moduli, Poisson's ratio, those are kind of the bare essentials that you need to create any of these uh, models. And then you could add boundary conditions constraints, you know, if you're going to push an axial load, or maybe lateral bending, or um, all sorts of flexion extension possibilities. Um, that's what you're going to do in Abacus. Abacus is great for doing the actual finite element analysis. Um, this is kind of the pre-processing of um, FEA. This is the actual explicit solver. And post-processing is kind of figuring out what happened to uh, your model. Um, figure out where the maximum stresses are. Visualize all of this data. And um, kind of output it in a meaningful manner that you can publish. Or um, uh, it, it makes it interpretable, interpret your results to uh, other uh, scientists or researchers or what, what have you. So um, that's kind of the overall workflow. Um, in the next video, I'm going to be talking about getting from the DICOM image to a mask. But this is, I just want to show you how we got from, or what I'm going to try to do in this next uh, series of videos. But CT, the idea is from patient-specific images to patient-specific models to uh, patient-specific tests so we can get patient-specific um, data to figure out what implants work, where the maximum stresses are, why um, certain things fail, why is there a fracture here, or there's endless possibilities. And um, the, I'm just going to do a really simple one and then hopefully uh, some of you can figure out how to maybe figure out uh, new implant designs or uh, understand fracture mechanics better or anything. So. Uh, shoot me a message uh, if you have any questions or if you want me to hit anything or clarify anything else. But uh, thanks.